Welcome to the core. If you're interested in your health, you're in the right place. Stick around for fad free, no BS tips and education to help you reach your goals. I'm Alini, a certified fat loss and nutrition coach by Precision Nutrition and CHFI. And I am Shannon, a NASM certified personal trainer. In today's episode, we're talking about goal setting, how to set amazing goals and how to reach them. All right. So if you do a quick search online, you will find many, many, many different ways to set goals, to reach goals, uh, what you have to do. And all of these work. Um, Anything can work as long as you do it, right? These are tools that you can use to um, reach whatever outcome you want. So just to give you an example, okay, I'm going to go through a few types of goal setting techniques that are out there. And then Shannon is going to give us her favorite way to set fitness goals. And I'm going to give you my favorite way to set uh, weight management goals. So we are going to go through all of that. And hopefully we uh, stay in the time that we want to stay. So um, a few techniques for setting goals. One that's very, very popular is SMART goals. SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time bound. And some people expand that to smarter goals where you add, evaluate, and readjust. So with any of these techniques, what you're doing is you are getting a goal and you're breaking it down to whatever um, these words are. Another type of goal is called hard goals. Hard stands for heartfelt, animated, required, and difficult. There's also whoop goals, which the name is my favorite. Um, It's wish, outcome, obstacle, and plan. And there are different ways to set that um, you can also set goals, not so much based on a sequence of letters of things that you're going to do. There are goals that you can set based on outcome and how you want to think about the goal. So for example, um, OKR goals are for objectives and key results. So you set a goal. This is done in companies a lot. You set a goal um, and you work backwards based on the outcome you want. Um, Micro goals are also super popular, meaning that uh, you have a big goal and then you just take it down to the smallest components you can, then you have micro goals. You also have backwards goals that is just getting the goal and working backwards to reach it. There are value-based goals. Um, It's checking if the goals you want to reach align with the values that you have. And there's also Locke and Latham's five principles of goal setting, which the principles are clarity, challenge, commitment, feedback, and task complexity. Complexity. Also, another technique. One thing that was very popular for a while there, up until a few years ago, was um, having a word. Um, lots of people had like a word for the year or a word for the month, but one word goals are goals that you just have one word, and that is just kind of an umbrella that you are going to base your decisions on. And other people like visual goals. It's literally taking some sort of image that represents your goal and using that in a place that you look at all the time. And some people feel that that motivates them to act towards their goals. So these are 10 examples of different techniques to reach goals. And again, all of this can be good. All of these can work and all of these can be absolutely horrible because if they're not good for you, if they're not something that you can follow through with, if they're not something that um, you're actually going to act on, then they're just worth the paper they're written up down on. So um, we have our preferred methods and that's what we are going to talk about today. Now, that being said, The goal isn't to become an expert at setting goals. The goal is to actually reach the goal that you have. So all of these suggestions, they're super helpful. You have to find a way to make this work for you. So maybe you add something, you take something out, you mix and match a few different techniques. But the thing is, this is to inspire you to find a way to reach the goals that you have and to find actionable 
steps to actually do something instead of just sitting down once a year and writing down your goals. So Shannon is going to talk to us about setting fitness goals. Yes, we love goals. Um, A fun fact, about 8% of people that make a New Year's resolution goal actually follow through on that goal. And only 5% of people, a lot of people have their New Year's resolution as weight loss, and only 5% of that population will reach their weight loss goal. So goals are so good to set short term and long term. And I am going to go on a bunny trail here, Eileenie, <laughs> but I just wanted to touch base on kind of what you already stated make sure that the goals that you make are tailored to you. So there's two goals that I want to talk about, and then I'm going to go over um, the fit goal, which is one of the better goals, in my personal opinion, for starting, continuing, or progressing an exercise program. An outcome goal is a goal that is focused on the end result and is in relation to another person, usually in the form of a competition. So this is very, very common when the new year does hit, okay? Whether it's uh, within a friend group or at your workplace, um, the person that loses the most weight in three months wins this grand prize and it's great, right? It is, but it isn't because A, you're not establishing all of the habits that you need to maintain that weight loss. And B, although you were successful, that outcome goal kind of told you that you weren't successful because you didn't quote unquote win. So if you have two um, females, they both weigh 200 pounds. Their goal is to lose 50 pounds each. Um, If female A lost the 50 pounds, but female B only lost 40 pounds. Well, because of the outcome goal, female B was unsuccessful. Even though she lost 40 pounds, which was huge, she didn't exceed that 50 50 pound mark um, as they had set. What up the hop in here and say that one of the biggest issues with that is that you can never win, right? Unless Uh you technically win, you're always behind and, and comparison is just something that is always going to steal your joy because it always steals from your accomplishments. Yeah. And it's like, you're always comparing yourself to, um, whether you're on social media or you're comparing someone at work or your neighbor, it's like, yeah, you're never going to win. So then our second step is performance goals. And this is a goal that's in relation to your own level of performance and behavior. So although maybe female A and B are the same age, they weigh the same, um, they have different activities that they enjoy. They have different metabolism. They have different foods that they like and dislike. So you need to make goals that are focused on you versus comparing yourself and having that outcome goal of a competition. So that was my bunny trail. And now (laughs) we're going to go into what we're really focusing on here, which is fit goals. So F-I-T-T and fit stands for frequency intensity, time, and type of exercise. So you can literally write out these acronyms on a piece of paper and then start your goals right there, short term, and then you can create more longer term. So we're talking about frequency. I like to say frequency per week. So how many times per week are you going to exercise? If you have not exercised a day in your life, or maybe it's been six months since you've exercised, you probably want to start out with two or three days a week, maybe even one day, just, you know, Every Wednesday morning, I'm going to get up and I'm going to do 10 minutes of something. Maybe that's where you start and that's perfect. Okay, next is your intensity. So are you just starting? Do you need to start out fairly light? Maybe you're focusing in on only body weight exercises. Maybe you're just getting into the habit of walking. Um, Maybe you're trying to progress your routine. So maybe you need to increase your load. You need um, heavier resistance bands or tubing. Um, Maybe you need to add an extra cardio session at the end of your program. Cardio, I know you love that, Alini. Um, Time. (laughs) I really don't, everyone. (laughs) 
Oh, yes. It's going to be a good conversation. So time <laughs> is, or the duration of your exercise routine. So on that Wednesday morning, when you want to just hop out of bed and go for that first walk, what is your duration? 10 minutes, 20 minutes? Um, or again, are you trying to progress your time? So maybe you're jumping from a 20 minute exercise session to a now 25 minute exercise session. And then your type of exercise. So again, are you moving into body weight stuff? Are you increasing your load, whether it's a dumbbell, kettlebell, resistance training with tubing or um, therabands? Are you focusing in on supersets? Are you doing uh, triangle training or progressive training, plyometrics, just the type of exercises that you will be uh, focusing on? So once you have that all laid out, then you kind of want to figure out per two weeks or biweekly, I would say would be a good place to start, is biweekly how you're going to progress each of that acronym. And then I would say within four to six weeks, you kind of want to reevaluate where you are. And then for sure, every three months, I would sit down and probably just rewrite everything over and see what has worked and what hasn't worked. Just tailor these, these mini goals, these short-term goals to focus on that long term goal. And it's, it's kind of hard to say specifically what that would be, because I think everyone's training um, is a little bit different. We're all at different chapters of our training. So feel free to always reach out and, and ask, Hey, I'm in this type of training. I've been doing X, Y, and Z. How can I progress my activities with that fit acronym? Awesome. And yeah, it's, it's always good if you don't, um, if you don't know what you're doing with training, just find someone to help you. Okay. We have a group program. We have availability to give you just some quick answers, um, but just find a, a coach at your gym or just find someone that can help you. If you have no idea what types of exercises. Shannon gave you a list of types of exercises. If all of that was gibberish to you, find someone that knows what she means and or her, and uh, let's talk it out and figure out what works for you. Yeah, definitely. That was a good name drop there on the core. We're always here to help for sure. Um, you know, I worked in a gym setting for, oh gosh, almost 13 years. And you know, sometimes you walk into a gym and you see that trainer behind the desk and sometimes they're there for a paycheck. I, however, thoroughly didn't work a day in my life at the gym. I sincerely loved it every single day, but I'm behind the desk, probably programming for my clients. I'm figuring out, um, you know, just other things that we can do for the gym, but I'm also there to help you. These trainers that are behind the desk are trained to help you. So if you don't know how to work a specific piece of equipment, if you don't even know where to start as far as a warm up, those trainers are there to assist you. How many times I've seen people walk into the gym and their warm up consists of, of bicep curls or calf raises or 100 sit ups? And sometimes we would go over there and to that client and we would ask, hey, do you mind if I just give you some ideas? I mean, that's what we're here for. So find a credible resource a credible trainer, AKA Shannon from the core <laughs> or, you know, a friend or there's countless free resources out there, but, um, yeah. And, and it's everywhere. I mean, fitness is everywhere now. So I think that we should all be on the right track towards safety and progression. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So when it comes to, um, goals in general, um, for me, I'm, I, I think less is more for myself. I, I like to simplify things as much as I can. So in setting my own goals, I started to get really frustrated because it, for me, it was just too much, all the things that I had to do. And so I narrowed it down all these different tools into four steps that um, I use with my clients, four steps that I use for myself. And the fit goals actually fit quite nicely into this framework. And you're going to see how. Um, so let's dive right in. So there, these are four steps that you're going to go through to set your goals and to achieve your goals. So the first step is to figure out what you want. Now, this one is very deceptive because we tend to think that we know what we want 
And then when you sit down to actually dig a little deeper, it sometimes it's very challenging for people. So I hear all the time when I say, okay, what's your goal? Oh, I want to lose weight. That's not a goal. That is a wish. That is a desire. Um, okay, let's let's do a, a, a word picture here that setting goals, imagine that you are an archer, you have your bow and arrow and you, you're achieving your goal is hitting a target dead center. So to say, I want to lose weight is that that's not a goal. That's actually the forest where the target is hanging from one of the trees. That is not your goal. That is not your target. So you have to figure out exactly what you want. So simply to lose weight or to be stronger or feel healthier, these aren't actual goals. You need to find what it is that you want behind that. So for example, if your forest is to lose weight, okay, what's your specific target? Do you want to lose a specific amount of pounds, which by the way, not highly recommended, we should usually work with percentages, dropping a bunny trail here, five to 10% uh, body weight loss is already enough to significantly improve health markers. Most of the time working with a percentage uh, puts you at a better spot. Anyway, losing the weight, that's not a goal. Uh, losing a specific percentage or losing a specific number, now that's a goal. Oh, uh, being stronger, that's that's not a goal. You can't measure stronger. You can measure if you are lifting heavier or as with the fit goals, you can measure your intensity, you can measure your progression, you can measure if you can do um, certain types of exercise that you couldn't before. So just being stronger, that is not a goal, what it is you really want. So the first step is to figure out what you want because you can only hit a specific target it. If you get your bow and arrow and you point to the forest, you're not going to hit the whole forest. You're going to hit something and it might not be what you were trying to hit. So that's number one is to figure out what you actually want and be very, very specific. These four steps, they could progress through each other. So the second one is to measure. Now that you have a specific goal, you need to figure out how you're going to measure this. Um, so for instance, you realize that losing weight wasn't a goal, that being stronger wasn't a goal. So you say, okay, so my goal is to lose 5% of my body weight. Okay. Uh, my goal is to double the amount of weight that I can, um, that I can curl or that I can lift or whatever. Now you are automatically figuring out what you can measure. Eileen, do you feel that when it comes to the measurable aspect of the goal, that it should always be numeric? Not necessarily. It just depends on the goal. So for example, let's say that um, I want to be a musician. Okay. And then my more specific goal is to learn to play the guitar. Um, the measurement, it's not numeric um, exactly because it's like, how many chords do I learn? How, how many songs? So the measurement always kind of falls with a number. And that's, that's a great question because people are, are um, we're trying to move away from numbers and so many things with health, but it usually comes down to the numbers. So for instance, if your doctor is concerned about your health in any way, they're looking at numbers on your tests that they're running, right? So um, the numbers, it many, many times it does come down to numbers. It doesn't have to be. So for instance, a non-numeric, for example, you had a pair of pants that you would like to fit, fit into. So you're not looking at the scale. You don't know how much you lost, but you know that you're fitting into these pants that didn't fit before. So that would be a non-number, but it's still a, a very specific measurement, right? So um measurements, they always are very specific, even if it's not a number, um, it is very specific. And the reason why is because we can't really improve what we can't measure. So just to say, you know, oh, I want to lose weight. Well, if you forget to eat dinner one day, then the next morning, you're going to be lighter. That doesn't mean that you lost weight. That just meant that you skipped dinner. Right? It's one of the things I like about fit goals is that Weights don't lie. You either lift them or they don't, or you don't. 
right? Like you're either strong enough or you're not to lift whatever, however many pounds that is. So measurements are most of the time, yes, they will be numeric. And that's just one of the easiest ways for us to um, see the progress that's actually happening. So that's number two. And the measurement always comes very easily after you figure out what your goal really is. So if you do step one, which is figuring out what you really want, if you do that properly, step two, which is measuring, that is a breeze. That is, you, you'll just know it the moment that you do step one. Now, step three is to define your action. Because when you know what specific goal that you want to reach, and then you've discovered how to measure it, now this part also becomes super easy. What are you going to do? How are you going to do it? Now, here's the thing. If you were actually specific, it's going to be easy to figure out what to do in terms of your actions. So for example, with the weight management example, okay, you want to lose 5% of your body weight. How are you going to do that? Those actions are very easy to come up with. And again, another plug for the core here, this is what we talk about every single month. What can you do to manage your weight? We know that not everybody's trying to lose weight. However, that is 90% of our public. I agree. And I like the, the A as an action. And I think it can also be referred to attainable. So even mm-hmm an attainable action. I mean, when you're looking at, at goals and you, a lot of times when you first start making goals for yourself, it's trial and error because you don't know exactly, um, the steps that you need to take personally to achieve that goal. Um, but finding steps that you feel will be attainable to you in your daily life. Absolutely. And again, this all hinges on knowing what your goal actually is. And this action part is really where the uh, fit goals that Shannon taught us about, this is where it really, really fits in well, because um, this is where you're actually putting on paper what you're going to do. So you've defined, um, okay, but going back to the weight management example, so you want to lose a specific amount of weight, you have to choose certain actions in your nutrition, you have to change how you're eating to get to that goal. What you're going to change, that depends on how you eat. And as much as this industry likes to say that there's a certain diet that's better, there is only one good diet. There's only one good diet. And the only good diet out there is the one that you can actually do for the rest of your life. It's the way that you can eat for the rest of your life. If it's a diet that you you do whatever the shake or supplement or diet or elimination or restriction, if you do it and it quote unquote worked really well, but six months later you gained back the weight, it didn't work well. It wasn't good. It it was, it was awful. So, you know, the only diet that's good for you is when you learn to eat in a way that you can eat for the rest of your life. And I think the only thing that you're going to lose on some of these diets is your money. Yes. <laughs> Lots of it. <laughs> oh my gosh. I could so just totally go on and on about these diets. I've, I've heard so many diets throughout my years of being at the gym, just people sweeping by the front desk, like, Oh, you never believe what diet I'm on now. You know, I've lost like 10 pounds in two days. And, and a lot of, I think that is probably another episode is what is a true loss of a pound? I mean, like you said, you didn't eat dinner last night and now you're going to weigh yourself the next morning. And you're like, I just lost two pounds. Like, "Mm, but you didn't No, you might be a little dehydrated and your stomach is empty. So you're two pounds lighter, you know, or, um, you went out to eat last night and the sodium content was high and now you're up three pounds. You did not gain three pounds. Um, yeah, that's another rant in another episode. I think (laughs) we're definitely going to talk about that in another episode. So, um, yes, the, uh, going back from all our bunny trails, we do this a lot, you guys. So (laughs) when you have discovered what you actually want, you've discovered what you're going to measure, you're going to define the actions that you take. Now, actions are not measurable. Okay. This is an important distinction. An action that you take is something that you do. It's not something that's measurable. So for example, an action that you might take is that you are going to um, include a fruit in your breakfast. 
Okay. Maybe you only have pancakes and waffles or uh, sausage, bacon, and eggs. Okay. So maybe an action you want to take is to include a fruit. This is not a prescription, by the way, this is a random example. So maybe that's an action you want to take. You don't measure that action. An action is something you do. Okay. You're going to measure what percentage of uh, weight that you've lost over a period of time. So finding what you want, what you're going to measure, and now your action, that is the things that you're going to do. And the fit goals, going back to our fit example, I want to be stronger, not a goal. I want to be able to compete in a triathlon, or I want to be able to curl uh, 20 pounds, whatever it is. Um, that you have something that you want to reach or you want to measure, you are going to look at these fit goals. And these, this fit is actually going to give you actions. How often are you going to do this? Um, how often are you going to train to reach this goal? At what intensity are you going to train for how long or when, and how are you going to do this? What kind of protocol are you going to do to reach that goal. So um, these are actions that you're going to take. And that review that Shannon was talking about, like every few weeks, every few months, you're going to review it. Why? Because that's how you measure your progress. It's by reviewing it. And the last step is the one that is not as tangible. But the last step is that you have to actually believe to your core that you can reach this goal. And that's where attainable comes in again. It's because if you set yourself up for something that you really don't believe that you can do, you're not going to do it. You're just, it's, it's going to fall. You're, you're just going to fall apart at some point and you're going to give up because it's going to be hard. Any goal you're set for yourself there's going to be moments where it's difficult. And we go through this with our clients all the time where it gets to a point where the client says, why am I not there yet? Or why has only this happened? And we list out their, their progress and their wins. And it's like, do you see A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all this stuff that you've, that have been wins and all these stuff that you're doing really well, but it's hard. And sometimes we don't see results as fast as for some reason <laughs> we told ourselves that we should. And so it's important for you to actually believe that you can reach these goals and for you to sometimes even break down these goals. For example, you want to participate in a bikini competition. Well, if you've never worked out in your life, you may be inspired to have this goal it's not attainable at the moment. You need other goals that are attainable to prepare you to become the person that can eventually be a bikini competitor, okay? So this is a really big goal that I gave you an example of just to show you that, you know, it's really, it's, it's more than the motivation. Reaching a goal, and, and this is so, so, so important for us to understand this in health, because when you reach a goal in your health, you're not done. When you reach a goal in your health, that's not the finish line. Um, reaching your health goals is not money in the bank. Your health is rent that is due every single day of your life. So reaching a certain goal, that's not actually your end goal. Your greater objective, and um, you know, maybe you've never thought of this before, but your biggest goal, your umbrella goal is to be the person that can live forever, live your lifetime with the goal that you achieved. So when you say that your goal is to lose X amount of pounds, that is your smaller goal. That's your right now goal. What you actually want is to never gain that weight back. What you actually want is to live without that weight for the rest of your life. So it's not simply losing the weight because again, you know, don't eat for three days. Please don't do this. Okay. This is just me being sarcastic. <laughs> yes, so if you this. don't eat for this, <laughs> this is very important. I'm not telling people to not eat, eat. Okay. But you know, if it were just a matter of losing the weight, then somebody wouldn't eat for a few days and then they lose all this weight, but of course it's going to come back. So your actual goal isn't just to curl 20 pounds. Your actual goal is to 10 years from now, be a person who can curl at least 20 pounds because 
after you get to the 20, you're probably going to want to progress. By the way, I don't curl 20 pounds. I'm just giving that, <laughs> that oh example. That's, that's <laughs> heavy. That's very heavy. <laughs> yeah, I tried curling my just my barbell the other day, and I was like, I did maybe two, and I started and arching it. my back, and my hips moved forward, and I was like, nope, I'm compensating. Time to drop it, Shannon. So I'm I'm giving everybody some like really really drastic examples Dramatic, here yeah. because you know I I just want to pull you into the big example so that you can bring this down to your life. That's it. Like if you don't. If you don't become the person that can sustain this goal, the goal didn't really work. And that's why people say all the time, oh, I did this great diet. I lost X amount of pounds, but I gained it all back. Well, then you didn't actually lose it. So you didn't actually reach the goal that you, that you had, because if you're not, if, if you don't learn to become a person that can sustain that goal, then eh, it's not really what you set out to do. Quick summary and our fit goals. It is, it stands F I T T stands for frequency per week, intensity, time, and type of exercise. And for our four steps, it is figuring out what you actually want being very specific. It is measuring what, uh, what you're going to measure to reach this goal. Usually it's numeric, not necessarily Three is defining what actions you're going to take. And four is actually setting a goal that is achievable. It is something that you believe that with some effort, you can get there. Yes. Now go and eat something. Yes. Go. Do not (laughs) skip dinner and do not spend three days without eating. That is not what we're saying. (laughs) All right. See you next time. Thank you for joining us for this episode. We would greatly appreciate it if you left a review wherever you listen to this podcast. Remember that you can join our email list at practicethecore.com for more tips on how to improve your health. We are Aline and Shannon, and this is The Core.